shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Faithfulness continues for all generations. Hallelujah. Let's praise and let's worship him this morning. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's wait upon him this morning. Let's wait upon him. Let's worship him this morning. If you're comfortable, let's lift our voices to him this morning. We worship you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise and honor to you, Lord, our wonderful God and King and good. Jesus, we praise you. As, as Sharon reminded us last week, do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hallelujah. My prayer for us this morning is as we worship him, as we wait upon him, the strength of God and the hope that we have in him will rise up in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls this morning. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship him this morning. Let's continue to praise him. Lord, we love you. We worship you. We praise you. We lay it all before you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God is able, and he will never fail. He is almighty God. Greater than all. For the Lord, our God is able. God is with us. God is on our side. Yeah. 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Holy name, sing 
this morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, let's bless him this morning. Let's worship him. Let's do what we've just sung. Let's worship you, Jesus. We praise you. We give you honor.
wait for him comfortable lift your hands in submission to him just wait for him and do what he wants to do in praise to you Lord we lift our hearts to you in praise and in worship to you Lord this morning worship Pray you will fill us again this morning, Lord Jesus. Pray, Lord, you refresh us and renew us again this morning, Lord Jesus. You shine upon us again this morning, Lord Jesus. Give you our hearts. We bow before you, Lord Jesus.
bubble over of your goodness that we can do nothing else but share it Lord Jesus oh, thank you Lord we thank you Lord as our song says you run after us you run us down Lord you hug us you embrace us 
you are there for us. You never fail us. You never leave us. You are so, so good. Lord, I, I pray in that goodness of God for those that need a touch of your healing hand this morning, Lord, here or online. Those with illnesses, those with maybe aches or pains or those who are just not feeling just quite right. Lord, would you put your hand upon them now in the name of Jesus. Would you heal them, Lord Father God. Would, would you release them from those pains and illnesses, Father God. For those needing guidance, would you direct, Lord Jesus, this morning? Would you make it perfectly clear where you are wanting them to step into, what you're wanting them to do? For those who have worries and strains, may it be finances or guidance or, or work issues or school or college or whatever it may be. Oh, Lord, would you help them? Would you strengthen them? Would you lift them up like on the eagle's wings, Lord Father God? We continue to think about young people who are doing exams, who have been doing exams and still doing exams, Father God. Oh, Lord, would you just continue to be with them? We thank you, Lord, you will have been up to them, with them up to this point, but continue to be with them, Lord. Continue to help them. Continue to hold them close, Lord. Help them, Lord, as I revise and as I do these exams. Lord, I pray for those who are feeling tired, who are feeling weary. We thank you, Lord, for the message last week that Sharon shared. And we take that on, Father God. We have that hope and trust in you, Lord Jesus. You will strengthen us. You will be with us, Lord, I pray. Lord, would you be with this community? Lord, Father God, we thank you for Mosborough. And we pray, Lord Father God, we will be a shining light to them, Lord. That you will give us opportunities as a church and as, indeed, as individuals to introduce you to them, Lord. Lord Father God, would you give us, let, let this church to shine your goodness and your glory. Lord, would you bless this community. Would you bless the community, our neighbours, our friends, our families, our, our school, our works, Lord. Whoever we come across this week, Lord, would you help us to shine you, Father God. And Lord, as I was changed this week on this, we thank you for the offering. The offering that we, we have at the back there, but also the offering that comes in online nowadays as well, Lord. We want to give you thanks for it. And we pray your blessing upon it. And we pray, Lord, that we will be wise with it. And Father God, you will be glorified through every penny they spent, Lord Jesus. That you would be glorified. In your precious name. And now as we become ready for communion, as we prepare our hearts for communion, Lord, continue to move amongst us, Lord, we pray. In your precious name we ask it, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let the nice survive. <laughs>
glory died my riches gain I count but loss and poor content all oh, my demands my all. Hallelujah. Just as we come round this communion table, let's just spend a moment. We all have busy lives. Let's just spend a moment in silence. Just a moment in his presence. Just a moment opening our hearts to him once again.
Well, we just want to give you thanks this morning. I want to give you thanks every day for what you did for us. How you came on this earth. You walked, you talked, you taught. You did miracles, you showed your love. You became the greatest sacrifice. You took all of that pain, that hurt. You took all the burdens of the world, all the sins, all the things that we do wrong. You took them upon your shoulders. You rose again. You call us to do this in remembrance of that. You call us to also, as we remember what you have done, you call us to remember what has gone on in the last week or two, where we are with you. Those things where we have messed up or gone wrong. You call us to acknowledge those things. Not in guilt, not in shame, because he's forgiven you. But to do it in the power of his love. And if um, joy and peace could you help me serve, please. Lord, as I come up, we just want to give you thanks this morning. Thank you for what these emblems represent. We want to thank you, Lord, for this moment can happen because of what you did for us. And we're not remembering a dead God. But we remember in a God that is alive, that is living, that is in us, with us today. And a God that's so gracious, merciful and forgiving. We do this, Lord, as we take this. May we remember those things this morning. May we remember your love, remember your forgiveness. That you will cast our minds back to that first moment where we realised what you had done for us. The joy it brought. We give you praise and worship for it.
Lord, we want to thank you. All morning we've been praying that you would be with us, you would help us, you'd refresh us, you'd restore us. And we want to say thank you, Lord, because you've done it. You've been doing it. And for some of us, we'll be going on these journeys. And I pray you'll continue to be with us as we do that, Lord. It's a beautiful, sunny day. We could be anywhere else, but to be in your presence, there is no greater thing. And we thank you, Lord. You are amongst us. And we thank you, Lord, for what you have done. And we give you praise and honour this morning. In your precious name. Amen. 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 God is good. You know I love him. Amen. We've got just uh, video news. Hello, good morning and welcome to Mosborough Elim Church. This is video news and this is everything to do with the life of the church. So on Tuesday at 6.30 we have our prayer meeting. Please do join us. We will send the link out shortly before the prayer meeting starts. If you have any prayer requests, please let myself or Titus know before Tuesday at 6.30 and it would be our honour to pray for us. If you're watching this online or YouTube, please do go to our website and contact page and let us know about your prayer request through that way. Otherwise, Tuesday, 6.30, prayer meeting. Please do join us. Just to share some of the things very quickly that are coming up, I'm just going to throw out the date of what's happening and then I will give you more information closer to these dates. But firstly, on the 10th of June, we've got Toy Library 2 back with us. On the 18th of June, Sunday the 18th of June, it's Father's Day and we'll be having a Father's Day family service. On the 25th of June, we've got a special service coming up and I'll share more information about that soon. 2nd of July, we have our AGM and reports will be out for that very shortly. 16th of July, we have Elsie May's dedication. I'm really looking forward just to celebrating with the family and dedicating Elsie May. So we've got some great things coming up. And all information and everything about that will be coming out very soon. Thank you. And lastly, as I always say, please don't forget our website. It has all the information, everything that you need, has all the links and everything that you would need to know about the church. Also, it has our contact page. So if you're watching this online or YouTube, please do get in contact. We would love to say hello to you. Otherwise, keep expanding, equipping and evolving. God bless you. Amen. We've got a couple of busy months coming up. Really looking forward to it. You know me, I love an excuse to celebrate. If we can't celebrate as a family of God, when can we? So I'm really looking forward to some of these things coming up and celebrating. Okay, Sunday schools, if you go to your classes... I'm going to ask Alistair to come up as well and um, I'm going to pray with him. <laughs> newest youngest member. Newest member to Sunday school. <laughs> so Lord, we thank you for this time. We pray for our Sunday schools. We thank you, Lord, for every child and young person you have blessed us with we pray lord you will be with the leaders now lord as i faithfully input into their lives would you bless them and honor them may you be glorified may they build on foundations lord father god that will be with them for the rest of their lives lord and we pray for alistair now as he he brings his word to us lord we thank you for him we thank you, Lord, that you have given him a word, and we pray that we will hear his, your words this morning through him, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. 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 Many of you know Alistair. Alistair is here with us most years. 
Uh, even through COVID time, you, you yeah. recorded for us and that. Alistair's a really good friend and um, has been a real help to me personally since I've come here in Sheffield. And it's a delight to have Great you with us you. again. Yeah. Uh, may the Lord bless you. Thanks. Let's give him a warm welcome this morning. Amen. It's always a great delight to come to Mosborough uh, and to share with you and uh, just to sense uh, God's presence moving amongst us this morning. And my prayer is that what I have to share with you today will be an encouragement, also a challenge, because we are living in momentous days uh, in the life of our nation and also momentous days in the life of the church. So, I, I want to read a passage of scripture from Mark chapter 1. Uh, Mark chapter 1 and beginning reading from verse 21 and reading to verse uh, 39. 20, Mark chapter 1 verse 21 to 39. Then they went to Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. Now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When he found him, they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. And God will bless the reading of his precious word. You know, there's, uh, the, the word ministry, a lot of discussion and debate going around at the moment about what exactly is ministry. And I suppose if we think in terms, if somebody mentions to you the word ministry, perhaps the first thing that comes into your mind is an ordained minister or a pastor who has been trained and leading a church. And that's a very, very important aspect of ministry. But every single one of us here today and every believer in Christ Jesus is called to ministry and to service and to discipleship. I once heard a story about a church in London and it had a notice board with all of the usual information, times of services, phone numbers and usually then it would have minister, reverend so-and-so or pastor so-and-so but this church was different. When it came to the word minister, it said everybody. And so basically the message was, if you're a part of this church, if you're a member of this church, if you're involved with this community, God has called you here to serve. And every one of us here this morning are servants of the Most High God. And of course, when we think about ministry, our great example is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And as we read the Gospels, I'm always reading through one of the Gospels. And as we read about the ministry of Jesus, and, and we see his power and his authority, his wisdom, the mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit that was upon him. But he, came, he said on one occasion, I have not come to be served, but to serve. And Jesus, in all his ministry, exemplified servanthood. Now, some of you will remember that a few years ago, there used to be a, a program on TV called A Day in the Life Of. And basically, a camera, a keyhole camera, would follow possibly a politician or a sports personality or a leader, somebody well-known, and uh, they would basically follow them for the day, and you would see into their home, and you would understand something of how they involve leadership, and, and you would get a bird's eye view of the everyday life of this particular leader. And I want to share something with you today from this passage in Mark, which we could probably entitle this, A Typical Day in the Life of Jesus. A Typical Day in the Life of Jesus. And we are rejoicing that this Jesus is here with us this morning. So, the story begins that Jesus, as was his custom, went into the synagogue on the Sabbath. And on this particular occasion, he was invited to be the guest speaker. And there follows a pattern. And there are four things I want to just very quickly share with you this morning about the ministry of Jesus in this situation that can be a template and a guideline as to how we can effectively exercise ministry. And so there are four things. Authenticity, authority, accountability, sorry, availability, accountability, and authority, all beginning with A. And so don't think I'm into Alcoholics Anonymous or the Automobile Association, but it's preacher's license. So let's just look at this first thing, authenticity. And we read here in verse 21, they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. They were astonished at his teaching. And here is Jesus in the synagogue. And here is the Sabbath. And so the people would be gathered there and they would be used to the usual sort of dry turgid recital by the scribes and Pharisees of the basic minutiae of the law. But that day, there was something different because Jesus was in the house. How many of you know that when Jesus is in the house, things begin to happen? And, and, and Jesus began to preach. He began to teach. He began to teach with authority. He began to teach with power. He began to teach with conviction. And you can imagine them sort of elbing. Not like the usual stuff this week, is it? There's something different today about church. Now, very often when I preach, the insomnia sufferers get healed. <clears throat> but this particular day was something special. It was once said of Jesus, never man spake like this man. There was something different about this speaker. So much so that such was the power and such was the anointing and such was the conviction upon Jesus that suddenly a man in the congregation who was possessed by an unclean spirit. Commentators are divided as to what that actually means. The suggestion is that when we read in the Gospels of somebody who is possessed with an unclean spirit, it's usually something of a sexual deviant nature. But that doesn't really matter. But the point is, this man had probably sat in that congregation for weeks and nothing disturbed that power that was inside him destroying his life. But the day came when that power met Jesus and that was the day that the life of that man changed. Amen? And I believe, friends, and I, I, I am really... Uh, I'm reading a lot about revival at the moment. Some of you may know that um, 
the Elim historian Malwin Jones is writing three volumes on the history of Elim and he's just brought the second volume out. And uh, my roots are in the very early days of the Elim movement. My father was one of the early ministers in the days of George Jeffries. So I've heard a lot of stories about how God used to move in tremendous power as the gospel was preached suddenly the power of God would come upon people and people would be healed and set free and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you not long to see those days happening again? Amen. Hallelujah. And so, this, ma this manifestation of this demon didn't wait till the end of the service because this demon began to understand that it was in the presence of one stronger than the evil kingdom to which it belonged. You see, friends, the gospel preached in the power of the Spirit will expose the presence of sin. And so Jesus, in a few words, just simply said, be quiet and come out of him. What, seven words. And those words spoken by Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit suddenly set that man free, he was totally delivered, and the onlookers were amazed. What new doctrine is this? For the unclean spirits are subject to him. Can you imagine, friends, across our nation today, as churches are gathered, as we are doing here, and the gospel is being preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, and suddenly there is a manifestation of the mighty power of God and lives are changed. Amen? Or oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? And so this man was set free. And when Jesus gave the command, be quiet, literally the word here, hold your peace. And it's the same word that Jesus used in the calming of the winds and the waves when Jesus said, Peace, be still. And I just sense, I want to just break off for a moment. And just I just feel the Holy Spirit leading me this morning. It may be there's somebody here today, and you just need, you may be facing a challenge, you may be facing some difficult situation. And God's word to you this morning, as you are in his house, is peace, be still. He is the one that calms the storm. He is the one that stills the waves. And he is the one that speaks freedom and deliverance in the power of his mighty name. So authenticity. Now, here he is, Jesus, speaking to the corporate congregation. But the most amazing thing about the ministry of Jesus is not only is he at home speaking to corporate congregations, but Jesus always has time for the individual. Amen? Jesus always has time for the individual. So when the service had finished, I don't know whether they had tea and coffee and biscuits afterwards, I'm not quite sure, but they went to the home of Peter's mother-in-law. And this dear lady, the scripture says, was sick with a great fever. She was totally bedridden. She was helpless, and the implication is that she was possibly nearing death. And Jesus walked into that situation with the same anointing, the same power, the same conviction that he exercised in the service a few moments earlier. And something happened that, to me, illustrates the liberating, transforming power of the gospel. Because we read there that Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up. That's the power of the gospel. Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up. Think back to the moment when you came to faith in Christ. When you experienced that life transformation. When Jesus changed your life. He came and he took you by the hand and he lifted you up and your life has never been the same since. My wife knows what I'm going to say now, personal testimony. Just over two years ago, she was diagnosed with a brain tumour. And she was five and a half months in hospital bedridden. 
and uh, I went to visit her every day and one evening I came back from the hospital and before I went to bed I was sitting in my study and I was reading this passage reading this verse and I read these words Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up and I said Lord will you enter that room in the Christie Hospital in Manchester and will you take Leslie by the hand and will you lift her up within a week she was taking her first steps and she's here with me today and we thank God and I know many of you are praying Amen but the point I'm making here is that Jesus made himself available to the individual you didn't have to make an appointment to see Jesus. I, I was told of a situation. Um, somebody uh, was a member of a church and really needed pastoral help. And they were told, you need to phone the minister's PA. That's not the sound system, that's the personal assistant. And they'll see if they can fit you in with an appointment. So the word came back, the minister can see you in three weeks. What are we? We are pastors. We are shepherds to care for God's people. And as somebody once said, what we desperately need in the church is chief executive servants. Too many pastors are chief executive officers. Listen, friends, Jesus made time for people. There was never any trouble. Jesus was always available. Yes, he would address the congregation. He would speak with power. He would perform great miracles. But he was equally concerned about this dear lady who required his individual attention. And here we are this morning in a congregation of people and those of you that are watching online, Jesus is here for you as an individual. Whatever your need may be today, reach out and touch him because Jesus is here in his mighty risen power. Do you know what? We're in severe danger of getting blessed if we're not careful, aren't we? Amen. So, you see, the gospel lifts people from the paralysis and judgment of sin, all made possible by the atoning work of Christ on the cross. We've just broken bread together a few moments ago. And never do we lose sight of the work of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and the power of to destroy sin and bring forgiveness and grace and mercy and compassion. And we declare the glory of the cross. Amen. So, authenticity. What about availability? Now, Jesus had a really busy day of ministry. And one would have understood it if he'd have sort of I don't know whether they had Costas or Starbucks in those days, but he would have just wanted to retire and just chill out and just have a relaxing evening. We read here, after sunset, the, that's when the Sabbath finished, sunset. Reports had gone around about Jesus being in the vicinity. They'd heard these amazing stories of people being healed. They'd heard these amazing stories of lives being transformed. And, and we read here, after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demonized, the whole city gathered at the door. Now, I want you to use your imagination. Let's believe and we're praying that we are going to see in our nation the church revived and renewed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine you're here on a Sunday morning and the place is packed and you've had a service and the gospel has been preached and suddenly you open those doors and there's a whole queue of people down that road with all kinds of sicknesses and needs because they've heard that Jesus is in the house. They've heard about the power of the gospel. They haven't come to the meeting but they're outside waiting, willing, expecting, because they've heard that Jesus is working in this place. You know, when the story of the, the guys lowering the guy through the roof, do you remember? Four blokes lowering him at the feet of Jesus. Some of you older people that are brought up on the old authorised version. You would remember that, wouldn't you? The one, you know, it's the one that Paul used. And at the beginning of that story, 
it says this, it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house. <laughs> That's the great need. You know, the greatest need in the church in our nation is not more preaching and worship. We need those things. They're important. Evangelism, we need that. It's important. The greatest need, and I've gone way off my, my notes and everything, but that usually happens with me. The greatest need in the church is for the manifest presence of the living God in the midst of his people. Amen? You know, we saw the coronation a couple of weeks ago. There in Westminster Abbey. And somebody said, the king is in the midst of his people. And what we want to see in the church is the king in the midst of his people. The king is here this morning. Amen? You believe that? And so... They brought their people, the people to Jesus. What an amazing picture of bringing people to Christ. You see, friends, people, it's not bringing people to church. That's important. What we are doing is introducing people to Jesus who can change their lives. Amen? This is the essence of mission. And, and, and this is the great need that, 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 that the church and I'm talking in very general terms, has to get back to this calling to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're living in days of great confusion within Christendom. All kinds of debate as to what exactly is the gospel. All kinds of debate on the whole area of human sexuality. All of these things. Listen, the main thing is the main thing. And it's to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that can change and transform lives. Do you believe that today? Amen. And so, he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them all. That was a late night for Jesus, having had a full day's ministry. Because there's multitudes at the door. The whole city came together. And Jesus laid hands on every one of them. So very often in the Gospels, we, we read that Jesus was moved with compassion. And, and, and that word compassion is a very interesting word. It comes from a Greek word, splikinathios, which literally means this. When you read that Jesus was moved with compassion, it means this, that when Jesus saw the effects of sin and sickness, he would be so distressed by it, it would cause him to exhale from his gut, and he would go, like that. That's the word spleek and atheos. That's what compassion means. And that's how Jesus reacted to the needs of people. It moved him to the very means of... It caused him to wretch sometimes when he saw the paralysis and the power of sin and sickness. And there was something inside Jesus that just said, I am going to set these people free. You know... I said a moment ago that I'm reading histories of revival. And perhaps the last major outpouring of the Spirit that happened in the UK was probably the Hebridean revival, which happened between 1949 and 1952. And, and God moved in tremendous power under the leadership of a man called Duncan Campbell. And such was the power of God. And by the way, that revival began as two ladies in their 80s, one of whom was blind, so they couldn't get to church, and they prayed every night that God would move in the Hebridean Islands. And as they prayed, they would have their Bibles open in Isaiah chapter, I think it's 54, I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. Cutting a long story short, God began to move in tremendous power. And when the services were over, they would come out and into the fields and into the highways and the hedgerows. There would be people prostrate before God, crying out for God to have mercy upon them. A deacon said to Mr. Campbell, Mr. Campbell, this is a community saturated with God. Trawler men out to sea would be found over their wheel, weeping and crying in repentance for God to have mercy upon them. There was a story about a headmaster who was lying on the floor convicted of sin and his pupils were leading him to Jesus. Can you imagine that happening in our nation at some point? And it 
It simply was because of this. Jesus was central. And Jesus was in the house. Moving on very, very quickly. So we have authority, availability. What else? A day in the life of Jesus. Accountability. You see, these are qualities that we need if we're going to be effective in exercising ministry. And so it's often the question has been asked, what was the secret behind the ministry of Jesus? We have it in verse 35. In the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he departed into a solitary place and there he prayed. You see, Jesus, we, we look at his ministry, we see his power, we see the miracles, we see his wisdom, we see his interaction with people. But the most important priority that Jesus had was to spend quality time alone in the presence of his Father and in prayer. Because what would happen on those occasions when Jesus spent time with the Father Seeking the will and mind of the Father, the Father would download vision into the heart of Jesus. That's why Jesus said, the works that I do, they're not my works, but the works of the Father who sent me. And so Jesus recognized the importance. If his ministry was going to continue to be effective, then it was absolutely essential that he draw upon that power base, that he spent that time with the Father. And you see, friends, I'm so glad to see that you're having a prayer meeting. God is challenging us. God is speaking to the church worldwide. We are seeing, praise God, the most powerful prayer movement in the history of the Christian church actually operating at this time. On Pentecost Sunday, there's going to be a global day of prayer, and it is reckoned around the world two hundred million people are going to be involved in some prayer activity, praying about specifics, including praying about Jerusalem, and praying that God will move in power to the nations. Two hundred million Christians praying on one day, on the Pentecost Sunday. Why? Because Jesus saw the importance of coming before the Father. And I was thinking about this and reminded of the words that Jesus said in terms of his communion with the Father. He said, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever the Father does, the Son also does. And so Jesus got his direction from his Father. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no one can work. And so we have authority, authenticity, availability, accountability. Lastly, urgency. My friends, we are facing the spiritual life of this nation is in a desperate state. It really is. You don't need me to tell you that. As a nation, we are going to hell in a handcart. And while this is going on, the church is talking about all kinds of stuff which is just totally irrelevant and godless. There is a urgency. And, and Jesus recognized this because at the end of this exhausting time in ministry, the disciples came to him and he said, listen, I must depart to the next towns. For this reason, I have been sent. Jesus could quite easily have thought, well, that was a great time of ministry there in Capernaum. I'm going to have a few days off and just bask in the glory of of all that happened. What a great conference I've been to. Well, there's time for rest. We need to have, we need to factor that in. But for Jesus, there was an imperative. There was a sense of urgency. He said, I have come to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came for the broken 
and for the dying and for the destitute and the oppressed and the downtrodden and the poor and the blind and the lepers and all the rest of it. That's the mission of Jesus. He didn't come to parley with the, with, with the religious leaders of the day and discuss theology. Jesus came to the broken and the dying and the destitute. And that is our mission. Amen? I know that you know that. And so there has to be a sense of urgency. There has to be an understanding that the days are short. I, I really believe, friends, that we, as we look around the things that are happening in our nation, as we look around the things that are happening in our world, that we are living in the last of the last times. I was asked to preach at a church about a month ago. And they asked me to preach from a scripture in Romans chapter 13 where the Apostle Paul says this knowing the time that it is high time to wake out of sleep for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed so many parts of the church are asleep the Apostle Paul says knowing the time understanding the time, recognizing what's happening around you, recognizing what's happening in the world, in the nations of the world, in the shaking that we are seeing. It's telling us that the coming of the Lord is rapidly approaching. And knowing the time and understanding the time, it is time to awake out of slumber, to wake out of sleep. Because our salvation, the coming of the Lord, is nearer now than when we first believed. Do you know, this might be the last Sunday morning you have here. Because this time next week, we could be singing What a Gathering. Now, most of you won't have a clue what that... That's an old song that was written about 500 years ago. What a gathering there will be in the air. I tell you, friends, the day is approaching... And in the meantime, we are to be about the Master's business. We are to, to be a people of vision. And I know that you are. And I follow you on Facebook, on social media, the stuff that you're doing in the community. And it's wonderful to see what you're doing. And in partnership with other churches, keep going. Keep faithful to the task. Because God's going to bless you. Particularly as you saturate that with prayer. and understanding of, of this model of ministry that Jesus exemplified. And as we seek to follow in his footsteps and we experience the daily empowering and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I was asked to preach in a church last Sunday. And uh, unusual because it was a, a morning and evening service. And the minister asked me to do some teaching on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, it was a service that was open to other churches in the town. So uh, apart from the local church, there were people from three other congregations. And I preached on the power of the Holy Spirit, on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And we invited people forward for prayer. And I think about four or five people got gloriously filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and began to magnify God in other tongues. There were people who got ministered to powerfully. There was a dear lady that was standing like this. And I said to her, what's your problem? She said, I'm overwhelmed with depression, anxiety and fear. I feel as though chains are binding me. We really prayed for that dear lady and she suddenly went like that. The chains fell off. My friends, this is what we've got to expect. Because if we are going to see communities healed, we must understand this as I come to a close, that this message of the gospel is it's not a message of knowledge. It's a supernatural message endued with a power of the Holy Spirit that has the power to change lives miraculously. And that's the ministry of Jesus. And he's left us a blueprint. He's left us an example. He said, when you engage in ministry, this is the example that I have given you. Authenticity, availability, accountability, and urgency. May God bless you today.
Amen. Thank you, Alistair. That was wonderful. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for that wonderful word we've just heard. And Lord, would we take that challenge up this morning, Lord. May we have that urgency in our hearts. May we follow your example. As we reach out to others, as we reach out to this community, May your Holy Spirit fall upon us, Lord. As Alistair said, let us reach out to you, Father God. And for that person in here this morning who needs to hear that word that he shared about peace, to be still, to be quiet, may that peace just, just surround us, Lord surround that person that needed to hear that word. It may be more than one. May they know that power of your peace upon their lives, Lord. May we all know the power of your peace upon our lives, Lord. Lord, as a church, we come humbly before you and we take the challenge of what Alistair has shared with us this morning. We take the challenge of what you have shared with us this morning. And we do it in urgency for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing our closing song.
Lord, we pray for Alistair and Leslie, Lord. We thank you for them. Lord, would you continue to bless and ordain their ministry, Lord Jesus, for every church they go to, for every blessing that they are, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the encouragement they are to many, many people. We pray for Leslie, you continue to heal her. We thank you for what you've done in her life, Lord. And Lord, would you continue to bless her and have your hand upon her, Lord. And for the rest of us, would you bless our week, Lord? May we walk in your power this week, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Do please stay for tea, coffee and refreshments. Thank you to everybody online as well. Can we just give Alistair and Leslie another round of applause as we thank them for their ministry this morning. Have a great week. God bless you.